From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. Vanilla. It's a term you hear a lot this time of year when referencing spring games and what exactly coaches are willing to do from a play calling perspective, what coaches are willing to put on tape. And Oregon was maybe as vanilla as it gets. We know that this is going to be a very creative. We know that this is going to be a very dynamic and explosive offense. And they didn't show a lot. And that's exactly what Dan Lanning and Will Stein wanted to do and that's maybe part of the reason what contributed to that low scoring maybe big 10 type of score in the first half in this spring game as well so even that considered there are some takeaways I can take from the quarterback position let's start first with Dylan Gabriel this offense doesn't look a lot different than it did under Bo Nix Okay, I think there's a reason why they specifically targeted Dylan to come into the system. I believe Dylan and Bo are pretty similar quarterbacks. Now, they're not a complete copy and paste, but you can see why they would want them. You can see why they fit in uh, to what Will Stein really wants to do on the offensive side of the football. And when I look at Dylan specifically in this game, and he showed it in his days at Oklahoma, but when I look at it in this game, he can take a first play and make a second play out of it. When the pocket collapses, when the pressure really starts to come in and he's going to see that with some of these Big Ten fronts and some of these Big Ten pass rushes and Big Ten defensive lines, right? He's able to spin out of that and really create a second play, set his feet and to be able to make the throw uh, down the field as well. He clearly is well in tune with what Will Stein wants him to do and the concepts that he wants to Dylan to be able to execute in this offense as well. You can tell there's good chemistry so far between these receivers. Dylan is accurate, right? When they did throw the ball down the field, there was a lot of run game, which I'll get to in just a minute. When he was able to throw down the field, he was accurate. He was on time. He appeared to be in rhythm with his wide receivers. Switching over to the other quarterback, I think I was maybe more intrigued specifically about Dante Moore. Where is he at from a development and a maturity point of view considering what uh, maybe the down parts during his reign at UCLA was last season. I thought he was very decisive with the football. I thought that he understood exactly where his receivers were we're going to be, and I think that shows a sign of maturity, maybe compared to where he was last season. I didn't come away overly impressed. I wasn't wowed necessarily by Dante Moore, but you can certainly see the progression. You can certainly see why Oregon and their coaching staff wants a guy like a talent like Dante Moore, and you can see that raw talent, you can see that potential and what it could eventually look like. When I watch Dante, that flick of the wrist and his ability to just put it 15 to 20 yards and that quick release down the field, that's what really has to excite you right now as an Oregon fan. And we certainly got a glimpse of that there in that spring game. I really had my eyes on Dante in the past game When it pertains to the run game, I really had my eyes on Jay Harris. The Division II transfer, I had my eyes on him because we didn't have a lot of film on him. We do, Oregon coaches were really excited about him, but we as a public, we as a viewing audience hadn't really seen a lot of him and how he would blend into this Oregon offense. And boy, did he blend in. He is just another versatile back in this Oregon system, his ability to run up the middle, his ability to get to the outside, his ability to be involved in the pass game as well. When you look at all of these Oregon running backs, they are so versatile. These This coaching staff really targets and they want their backs to be able to do every single thing. When you looked at someone like Bucky Irving last year, and especially Jordan James, who's expected to be the number one back. You saw it in the spring game from Jordan as well. His ability to make those quick cuts, one read, good vision, hit the hole, get to the outside, catch the ball out of the backfield. That's what Oregon likes to see out of their running back, their versatility. And that's going to be a theme when we talk about Oregon's offense specifically reacting to what we saw during this spring game. Okay, there was already good depth at the running back position. When you look at Jordan James and Noah Whittington, Noah is still recovering from an injury. Now you throw Jay Harris 
into the mix, that is a hell of a three running back rotation for the Oregon Ducks offense. There was another part to the offense and a little bit of a wrinkle to the run game that I saw and that I was very intrigued in and maybe a little bit of a light bulb went on for me. How about Kenyon Sadiq that really showed out in this game? He's listed as a tight end. When's the last time in the Big Ten that you saw a tight end get involved in the run game the way Kenyon Sadiq got involved in this Oregon system? You send him on jet sweeps, you motion him into the backfield. It's just another weapon. We talked about it in the preview with Doug Scott from the QB11 show. There is so much depth the way Dan Lanning has recruited out of high school and the portal, just the amount of talent, the depth of talent that comes into this team. There are so many different parts of the offense that you are going to have to keep an eye on as a defensive coordinator from week to week. There may be a week where Jordan James and Jay Harris absolutely pound the rock. There may be another week where you see the fourth wide receiver or the fifth wide receiver where you see a Jerry on Dickey, where you see a Kyler Casper really emerge and like, oh, we got to look at that as well. There's so many pieces across this Oregon offense. That's what's really going to make them so dangerous because you have a quarterback that can once again distribute the football and you have an offense that can do it in a multitude of of ways. You saw it in the throw game and you especially saw it in the run game with Jay Harris and Kenyon Sadiq in this spring game. A theme of Oregon's spring game and of this video has been vanilla. But you factor in maybe why this game was low scoring and you have to give credit to the defense. I did a video on this channel a few weeks back. Can Oregon's defense be a championship-level defense? If they can cover like they did in the spring game, they're going to be fine. When you saw this Oregon offense, whether it was the green team or whether it was the white team, try to push the ball down the field early in this game, a lot of times there was a defender on the hip pocket. A lot of times there were zero blown coverages this defense knew exactly what they needed to do in certain situations. And a lot of times you see that during spring games. A lot of time you see guys open by 10 yards or 20 yards and you see some of those busted coverages. Now there was maybe one, maybe two throughout this entire game, but I thought as a whole, the coverage team and the secondary really showed just how good they are in the back end. And then you say, considering who they're going against, considering that they are going against what is maybe the best wide receiver group in all of college football, look, this Oregon offense, they're going to get theirs. That's how talented they are from a wide receiver perspective, from an offensive perspective. But I thought as a whole, I thought this secondary really proved to be a strength of this defense. There were other parts of the defense that, re that did pretty well throughout this game, but I thought the coverage was really good considering the type of talent that they're going up against on the other side of the ball. And through spring ball, through summer, and as we approach fall, this secondary is going to continue to get better because it's good on good. That's how great college football programs are built. That's how Michigan is built. That's how Georgia is built. When you recruit really well, when you develop really well, and you bring in great talent, and you face off against fellow great talent on the, off, on the other side of the ball, in this case, the offensive side of the ball, you're going to continue to get better. When you face off with Tez Johnson, when you face off with Evan Stewart, Trey Sean Holden, when you face off with some of these great route runners, you're going to become a better coverage defensive back. It's just the fact of the matter. When you practice against that type of talent, you're going to match up with that. Coaches talk about competition all the time. Elite versus elite competition is where you want to get to as a college football program, and Dan Lanning has gotten to that point. That's why maybe I'm not as concerned about the Ohio State offensive line because they're going up against the best defensive line, one of the best defensive lines in college football. Same with Michigan. Those two offensive lines are going to get better and are probably going to be pretty good when we get towards the end of the year. Oregon is in that same category as well. One thing to keep an eye on now that spring practice has concluded for the Ducks is the transfer portal. Not necessarily of players coming in, 
but players departing. Oregon is over the scholarship limit. That's what happens when you bring in big, talented recruiting classes and transfers as well. So that is something to keep an eye on. I don't think that they're going to lose a bunch of really good players. This is still going to be an Oregon team that will be one of the best in the Big Ten and therefore one of the best in college football. But when we talk about the depth of talent, that's certainly something to keep an eye on. I could maybe see some of these freshmen stepping up into bigger roles, maybe some of these younger players stepping up into bigger roles if maybe you see a couple of experienced players maybe hit the transfer portal coming up. But this spring game... Okay, it doesn't change my mind what happened before, what happened after. Oregon is still an outstanding football team. I want to hear your thoughts on all things Oregon spring game. Leave them in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.